My name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I got my second design internship with Pinterest. Good morning everyone, welcome back. This is the second episode of my internship journey. And today we're going to talk about my second internship, a product design internship with Pinterest. If you don't know what Pinterest is, just tap the share button down below, then the right arrow, and there you go. And don't forget to pin the like button so that it turns blue. See what I just did there? Yeah, pin it. In this video, I'm going to go over three things that I believe contributed to receiving this offer. Number one, thorough projects. Number two, design philosophy. And number three, mindset. So let's dive right in. So here's the context. Rewind back to the last video that I said the upcoming summer was probably going to be the last summer, the last chance I can get a design internship before graduating. Which was true, except I decided to spend another semester getting a computer science minor. It's totally an investment to stay in school for another 16 weeks because I have to pay for tuition, for housing, for food, etc. But I know a computer science minor on my resume will give me some credibility as I want to work in the tech industry. Plus, I can work on more projects, aka helping my portfolio. Lastly, and most importantly, I can afford another internship opportunity in between. Now it's time for the story. After my first internship with MuleSoft, everything changed. From all the radio silence from anything in 2015, to be able to interview with Apple, Google, Visa, CBS, etc. It's quite a leap. So for designers who just got started, don't get frustrated. Because as long as you work towards your very first internship or job, you will feel everything becomes so much easier. So much. Seriously. My Pinterest product design interview process started with a phone screen and then a portfolio review and concluded with a round of design philosophy slash culture fit. Weeks later, the design recruiter called me and said they would like to extend an offer. Fantastic. With all the context and process established, Let's get to the takeaways. Number one, thorough UX projects. No exception this time. Yet, the difference is, you might want to have more than one project with more breadth, depth, and high level of execution in both the core functionalities and the visual design. I knew that's what I needed, so I convinced my professor to let me do a mobile app project. And that project is actually still in my portfolio. Link in the description, feel free to check it out. I know it's far from perfect, but back then it was a decent project to have on my portfolio. So hold your criticism. I want to be transparent about my design journey, so I'm happy to share what I had. This project has a whole lot more than the parking kiosk project I talked about in the last video. This is an individual project that covers market research, semi-structure interviews, affinity diagram, persona, ideation, wireframes, user testing, interactive prototypes, more testing with those prototypes, flow diagram, visual polish, interaction animation, product page, and whew, I think that's the end of the list. Literally anything I can think of back then to create a thorough project. Believe it or not, I did not plan this, but the UI design of my app is quite similar to that of Pinterest. And I also thought about adding the capability of talking to apps like Pinterest. I was not aiming for interning at Pinterest when I was doing the project. My starting point was always to come up with the right design choice to make this a better product or to create a better user experience. So as long as you carry that thinking and be thorough with your design process, your project should be heading to the right direction. I presented two projects to a design lead at Pinterest, two fairly big school projects, and each of them was given eight weeks to finish in class. However, to create a really thorough and high quality project, I don't think eight weeks is enough at all. So I spent more time afterwards to keep polishing those details and put them up on my website, which took another week or two. Hmm, maybe three. The truth is, there's no rule about how much time you want to spend on a class project. An 8-week project in class does not mean you cannot touch it at all after those 8 weeks. Most of the time, design never ends. Because as you do more exploration and testing, there are always better ways to improve it. Just like we have the original iPhone and then 3G, 3GS, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Where's 9? And each version is more truly extraordinary. And it's twice as fast, 30% faster to 15% faster than the previous one. Since your goal is to have 
great project. Spending more time on it is absolutely worth it. When you have two thorough projects, you should be in good hands for design internships because you are demonstrating that you can repeatedly produce good design. Number two, design philosophy. Interviewing with Pinterest is also the time that I realized design is not just about your projects, but also about the way you think about design in the context of everyday life, how much design is integrated into your worldview and daily activities. Presenting a project is not hard to do at all because it can be as mechanical as writing down a script and then memorizing it. And then you can use the magic of practice makes perfect to pass a round of portfolio walkthrough with no problem. However, your design philosophy is not really something that you can rehearse. You either have a point of view or you don't really have one. It develops over time as you subconsciously nurture it. The things that you see or interact with and the way you think about those things that you see and interact with are weaved into your life and routine. Some of the questions that you might get in this kind of interview are, for example, what is your favorite font? What is your favorite products? What is your favorite app? What do you think about a typical washing machine? What are some of the ways you can think of to improve it? When I first got some of these questions, I was a little surprised because I was not expecting them. But since I do get frustrated about how horrible my washing machine was, horrible, or how much I like about my iPhone, so I was able to describe some of my observations, experiences, reasonings, and point of view, which helped me in the end advance to the next round. Number three, mindset. The mindset, the attitude, the mentality you carry with you during your application process can have such a determining effect on where you end up being. Here's my anecdote. In fall 2015, there was a career fair at Georgia Tech. I never thought it would be helpful for me to attend one because it was for the College of Computing. But this time I was like, why not check it out? This is a photo taken on that day. The building was packed with students. Here's what blew my mind. I lined up for the Pinterest booth at 9 a.m. And it got to me at 11 a.m. No, the two hour wait was not the mind blowing part. It was actually normal. The mind blowing part was I waited in line for two hours, but I could only get to talk to the recruiter for two minutes because they said, We are not looking for design interns. This was totally insane for me to take in at that point because I knew Pinterest value design a lot and they should have made it very clear what type of interns they were looking for at the booth or somewhere else. This lack of care and user experience combined with my two-hour waste really pissed me off. I was mad enough to say to myself, I will never work for this company. A few months later in spring 2016, I saw a job opening on a summer design internship from Pinterest. I had two options. Option A, ignore the post because they don't care about your experience, they're wasting my time, their internship must suck. Or option B, I apply and see what happens. Of course, I picked option B. In the end, the fun fact is, not only I ended up interning there, but I also had a blast at Pinterest, make great friends that I still keep in touch with these days. Pinterest interns, Josh and Charlie. Hi. And it also helped my portfolio a lot because I got to work on a really cool project. At this point, you might want to comment. Oh, this story is really stupid. Of course you're gonna apply no matter what. My point is, what mindset you carry with you will decide which option you will ultimately pick. If I felt so strongly about hating Pinterest because they didn't plan properly or they wasted my time, I would not have applied at all when a job post came out. So the takeaway is, be open-minded, be flexible as you go with the flow, let the opportunity present itself. Because before you receive an offer, you actually have no power to design on anything. Stay humble, keep learning, don't let your emotion get in the way of something that is potentially beautiful and meaningful. Alright guys, that concludes my second design internship in Silicon Valley with Pinterest. The three key ingredients to this offer are thorough projects, design philosophy, and mindset. With that said, thank you guys for watching. Hope you find this video useful. If so, pin the like button for that awesome blue to show up and subscribe to this channel for more exciting content. This will help motivate me so much in producing high quality content later on. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers.